so you were in the underground scene in the UK for about 10 years, yeah? yeah. If I'm yeah. not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, you worked with, who did you work with? Tiny Temper, Stormzy? So we worked Stormzy, Tiny Temper, Krepton Conan, Chip, Skepta, um, a lot of major names in the urban scene. We've been there from early. When you go to the US, what would you say, like, Politics-wise, oh, in terms of music, yeah. what is the difference between the UK and the US in terms of like politics? Politics-wise, I'll say this. America definitely gives you a chance. If you're good at what, you're, at what you do, you'll get an opportunity. I'll definitely say that. UK is very like, who are you? Yeah. Uh, uh, wasn't it like, star weren't you starstruck, bro? Like, heck yeah. Bro? Bro, like, you have to understand. I grew I grew up watching America. Like I, my, one of my favorite shows. We all did. Time. We all did. Do you understand? So mm. one of my favorite shows is Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So the very first day I landed in LA, I was like, "Take me to the mansion. I need to go and see <laughs> this place that I've been watching my whole life." Inda, what do you Welcome to a special edition of Podcast and Chill. And today I got a special guest, man. We're coming at you live from Nigeria. Uh, this guy is one of my favorite producers, man. So his name is Mikey. Uh, he's part of a group. It's called Sons of Sonic. Uh, he was brought up, uh, brought up in, um, in 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 the UK, uh, but he's from Nigeria, and he's done some crazy work, man, with the biggest stars. I'm talking about J Lo, Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, Stormzy, Ty Dolla Sign. The list goes on and on. These guys are massive. So it's an honor to have them in, uh, today in studio. Uh, Mikey, welcome, bro. Thank you for having me, bro. Thank you. Thank you. What's your full uh, Nigerian name? A full Nigerian name? Yeah. Oh, um, Olani. Olani. Yeah, Olani. So where does Mikey come from? Mikey comes from Michael. That's okay. my middle name. So my name's Olani Michael Akinkumi. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to you, man. Thank you Appreciate so much for you. your time, bro. And it's so crazy. Before we started recording, yeah. we were chatting outside and I thought yeah. what you said or what you mentioned was so like... Uh, uh, um, mind-boggling mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. You were saying that um, you, you you only came to Nigeria for the first time in 2019? Yeah, 2019. That's insane. How does that happen, bro? Uh, do you know what it is? It's one of those situations where it was out of my control. Um, you know, growing up family, you know, the narrative is, you yeah. know, Nigeria is this way and it's dangerous and it's scary. So Not uh, just Nigeria, I think Africa, Africa Yeah, of general, course, yeah. of course, yeah. But for me, like, culturally, like, I never understood it. It's like, I'm Nigerian. Why can't I go to Nigeria? And I think 2019, we were given the opportunity to come to Nigeria to work at a camp with Universal Music. How old are you this time? I'm about 27, oh. 20, 27, 28. So at that point, I'm an adult. I already yeah, yeah, yeah. lived in London. Then I moved to LA. I was living in LA for about, at the time, six, five, six seven years at the time. And then to go to Nigeria was like the last piece to my identity, wow. you know, and landing and you see everybody that's like you. Yeah, you, see, yeah. you see your own, yeah. you know, you see your brothers, you see your sisters. And But in those yeah. 27 years, there never came a point in time where you were like, I got to go to Nigeria, man. All the time. my cousins are. My All the time. Life. Yeah. All the time. But it was like, when was the opportunity? Because during those years of my later teens, I was working on music. So I was trying to like get into the industry, on the grind, on the come up. So Nigeria was like a distant place. It wasn't like urgent at the time. So mm. when we got the opportunity to go, our, our manager at the time asked me and my uh, business partner, have you guys ever been to Nigeria? And we were like, no. And both of us, it was both of our first time at the time. So yeah. it was good. It was a good life changing moment. So you come 2019 when you land here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's going through your mind, bro? Bro, it was a it was a, it was a rush of emotions yeah. because it's like okay, I haven't been here before, but my household in London was Nigeria. <laughs> like my home was Nigeria. So culturally, the food, the wow. respect, the upbringing was all there. But I think for me, seeing it in person and you're driving on the mainland bridge and you're seeing like, you're seeing wealth and then you're seeing poverty yeah, right yeah, next to each yeah, other, yeah. it messes you up. It yeah. just, it's, it's, you're a bit overwhelmed. And then you come across the talent, you know, you we came from music. So funny enough, at the camp, Thames was there before wow. she blew. And Thames and her manager actually connected her at the camp because Thames' his manager was is a good friend of her. So mm. like you're seeing all this talent and then you're just like, what? There's gold in this place. Yeah. There's gold in this on, on this continent. And it's just like, why haven't I been here earlier? How was um, the heat for you? Because when I landed in Lagos. Bro, as you can see right now, <laughs> the heat, the heat. It's and the matter thing is, I live in LA. So like it's like, it's heat over there, but this heat is different. Um, <laughs> 
It's just, it's good though. It feels yeah. good for my body. It feels like my body needs the sun. It's radiant, you know, yeah. but I still not get enough of it. So if, I, if I'm if i sweating all over the place, I apologize. But, nah, you know, it's clean, it's man. It's all good, you're good. You were saying something that I, saw, I found so profound. You were saying that like, in, uh, um, when you come from the UK, they, yeah. um, they, there's a stigma around Africa that it's not safe for yeah. crime or whatever. Mm. But in London, people are stabbing each other. There's mm. just as much crime, if not more. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, think, I think the narrative about Africa is one that after coming here, I'm like, we have to change that. Mm. Because it's so easy to be like, you know, Africa is this way and it's corrupt and everybody's evil and everyone's bad. And when I land, I get nothing but love. So it's what narrative was I told that I believed for majority of my life, you know? And I think living in London, we had our own situations as well. Like it wasn't safe for a period growing up when I was in London as a young male, you yeah. know, there was stabbings, there was robbings, there was shootings. Like it's, London has its own thing. So mm. I think, you know, after coming here and seeing what's happening here is to change that narrative, mm. to change that. No, Africa is actually beautiful. Mm. You know, the whole of it, it's, it's actually amazing. I just feel like the infrastructure just needs work and, you know... Of course, of course. As we know, we can yeah. see. But, yeah, that narrative has to die. I mean, you can work on the infrastructure, but you can't work on the people. And I think we have some, some of the most amazing people in the yeah. world. I yeah. mean, we were at Ghana this other time and the people in Ghana are amazing. Bro. Yeah. Like Nigeria, even the mm -hmm. people here. I know they always talk about, you know, exports and the riches of the, the soil, but yeah. I think Africa's number one export is the people. So when you say that, do you think the narrative... So I'm just I'm just thinking out loud, right? Yeah, yeah of you course. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, of course. Do you think the narrative would be like, all right, um, whatever is going on in the UK or in Britain mm -hmm. or in Europe, they want you to stay that side because if you guys were to come back home, like, and we were a unit and we unified, like, we would take over the world, right? Think about it, bro. Nah. Numbers, resources. Nah. If we kept it in our own, yeah. And on the continent, each one teach one from each country. We're done. We don't need anybody else. We bro. don't need anyone else. And if you look at history, they 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 know that. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? They know that, okay, we can go and it's divide and conquer. Mm. You know, and I think if we come together as a colony, like if you look at ants, for example, yeah. they're powerful together. Yeah. You know understand what I'm saying? Because we're kings, bro. We're kings. We are. And it's like at some point in history, it was erased from our memory and, yeah. our, and access. Do you understand what I'm saying? When yeah. you do your own research and you understand that, no, like this is gold. Yeah. This right here is gold. Yeah. It's like, oh, we need to go back to that. Yeah. We need to go back into that and invest in our own and, you know, inspire each other. Like, okay, you're from South Africa, I'm from Nigeria. There's no difference between me. 100%, yeah. Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's just, you know, you've got to change the narrative. Have you been to SAS? No, I'm yeah. looking to go. Yeah, and I know who to call when I land. Yeah, you got to come. We'll show you a good time, I'm man. 100%. How was the club 100%. last night? I missed the club because I just landed and I was so tired. Yeah. How was okay. the club last it was, night? It was, it was a lot. <laughs> 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 I won't lie, because I don't really go out like that. I'm, I'm a studio rat, stay in my house, Netflix, chill, rest. Yeah. So when Larry calls me, he's like, yo, you got to come out. I was like, right, cool, let's come out. And let's do it. I, re I remembered why I don't come out. <laughs> but it was good. It was good vibes. Had some people from London, you know, that we came out with as well. And we yeah. just had a good time. It was good. Uh, so you were in the underground scene in the UK for about 10 years, yeah? yeah. If I'm not yeah. mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, you worked with, who did you work with? Tiny Temper, Stormzy? So we worked... Ugh, Stormzy, Tiny Temper, Krepton Conan, Chip, Skepta, um, a lot of major names in the urban scene. We've been there from early. You yeah. Know, and we had a lot of success with them. Yeah. And then we just got to a point where we were like, okay, because we grew up in church, me and my business yeah. partner Mo. And growing up in church, you have to learn how to play different genres. You can't just play just one sound. But I grew up listening to R&B. So yeah. you have that gumbo pot of genres to study and learn yeah. and play. So you end up as a producer making them. Mm. So what happened was we didn't like being in a box. We didn't like just doing like the urban stuff, like the urban rap. Yeah. We wanted to do pop songs. We wanted to do R&B songs, but London... Because it's tough in the UK, like when you want to work with the mainstream uh, Literally uh, that, and it was, artists, it was yeah. hard. Yeah. It was like we do the label rounds. It's like, yo, you stick to your urban stuff. It's, it's as if you was there with me. Like, he knew that. Like, <laughs> and that was very, very frustrating for us. So what we what happened, fortunately for us, Moses' older brother, 
is um, a super producer by the name of Harmony Samuels. So he's, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my You did Chris Brown stuff, Chris yeah? Brown, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So that's our big brother. So he's like the mentor. We call him the blueprint, that's basically. Crazy. So at the time when we were doing all of that, he was already in LA working with like the likes of Chris Brown. So we would travel to LA, see what he's doing, be inspired, and then come back and be like, okay, how do we do our own thing? Yeah. But we just got to a point where we're just hitting ceilings all the time. So we moved, we left. We went to America, we got signed off one song that the A&R heard, which was Six Words by Wretch Free 2. Mm. And from then, it was literally like, okay, you guys are good enough. Let's put you in situations, let's put you in rooms. And then we just delivered every single time to the point where now we live in there for eight years, Jeez. working with Usher, Chris Brown, like uh, Justin Bieber. We're in these rooms like, oh, so it wasn't it wasn't us, it was yeah. the environment. Yeah. Do you understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, That's yeah, one yeah. thing I'll tell creators is sometimes, the environment might not appreciate you, so sometimes you have to leave. You yeah. know, it says uh, in the Bible, a prophet is never accepted in his own town, right? So mm. you sometimes might have to leave, do what you have to do, and then your hometown will be like, oh, yeah, you're sick, you're amazing. So that was kind of like our story. Whose idea was it to, to go to America? Really? Was it to you or Mo's? Um, it was joint. Yeah. It was really joint because, you know, the vision had to come into fruition. The vision yeah. was to make, when we made this, the name originally was SOS Entertainment Timeless Music. That's what oh, used to wow, run around with. Beautiful. So if you're trying to make timeless music, you don't stay in a box in our opinion. We wanted to do everything. We wanted oh. to learn how to make great songs. We wanted to learn how to mix great music, how to basically take your music to the next level. So when you hit a plateau in London, yeah. you're just like, okay, what's the next? What, what sound was big at that time? Ooh, at the time it was very like, uh, because Chase and Status was like the sound and yeah. like Wilkinson was, at the time when we started to come in and it was like Tiny Temper. Like, yeah, Tiny Temper. Tiny Temper. Yeah. I remember being in uni and pass out. Yeah. I remember was being insane, in my, I, I remember being in my SU and sitting there, I'm like, who the who hell, hell is this? Made this. Yeah. What the heck is this? But at the time we had grown up on 90s R&B. So mm. R&B in the UK wasn't as big as it is now. Yeah. So we're having this fight of, no, we want to make R&B and, and it's aggressive. The tiny sound was aggressive. It was, it was loud, bro. It was yeah. an alarm. So we just had to be like, okay, let's grind it. But then you can only grind so long until you is that is that something. drill? That tiny tip of sound? No, it was like, it was like electronic pop. It was like a heavy electronic influence because yeah, of Labyrinth, but it yeah. wasn't like Drew and that wasn't the time. It wasn't the sound at that time. At the time, you still had like Grime. You still had, Grime was very dominant at the yeah. time, but what Tiny did was just like, where did What's, you come what, from? What sound does Jamiroquai? I love Jamiroquai. Jamiroquai is like, I want to say like funk-ish pop. Okay. It's like, that was, the, he was very like musically influenced with yeah, his sound. So yeah, yeah. even that was like a different era at the time, but we wasn't coming from that. Remember, we're from Southeast London. So yeah. we're growing up on just like a mixture of what was happening on the ends and then listening to Brandy. Like, <laughs> make it make sense. You know what I'm saying? So make it make sense. And we did. We yeah, did. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. So like dubstep influences as well was popping at the time. So when you go to the US, what would you say like, Politics wise, oh, in terms of music, yeah. what is the difference between the UK and the US in terms of like politics? Politics wise, I'll say this. America definitely gives you a chance. If you're good at what, you're, at what you do, you'll get an opportunity. I'll definitely say that. UK is very like, who are you? Mm. Who's your manager? Mm. What have you done? And then we might consider you to go. Mm. But America, especially living in LA, because everyone in LA is not from LA, you don't want to miss on the connection. Like you oh. could literally meet somebody and they press play and you're like, yo, okay, let's let's do something. Just like that? 100%, bro. Wow. Like I've been in situations where people have walked past the room, heard what we're doing, and they come in like, yo, let's connect. Let's da 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 Let's make a song. And then we get placements. Mm. They're very like on the situations like, you know, in terms of not missing an opportunity. But yeah. I would definitely say, this is the best way to describe it. If you see London, for me anyway, London is like Premier League. Okay. America, especially LA, is Champions League. Ah, if you wanna, If you want to know if you're really about this music thing, yes. America will test you. Wow. That's and they beautiful. always say that if you can last at least five years in LA, you, you're good at what you do. You're good, eh? Yeah. So we did eight years. So Yeah, I know. More than well. <laughs> we tried. You did our thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh wasn't it like start weren't you starstruck, bro? Like Heck yeah. Bro? Bro, like, you have to understand, 
I grew I grew up watching America. Like I, my one of my favorite shows. We all did. Time. We all did. Do you understand? So yeah. one of my favorite shows is Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So the very first day I landed in LA, I was like, "Take me to the mansion. I need to go and see <laughs> this place that I've been watching my whole life." Yeah. You know, and you do like I'll go to parties, rooftop parties, and Man. Brandy's walking past, or no way. Ray J's walking past, no or like way. you know, you, you see like Usher. Like the first time we met him, and it's just like. I've been watching you from afar. Yeah. Now we're in the same vicinity. But the thing is, you have to keep your cool. You can't be like, yo, man, I'm a fan. <laughs> or, you know, you can't go into the studio session like, you know, you're here to work, but then you become this kid. You can't. You have to hold yourself. So internally, I'm screaming, 100%. Yeah. My, my head is melting. So, I remember when I met uh, Rodney Jerkins, Dark yeah. Child, the producer, at a studio session, and I'm not going to lie, I nearly fainted. Isn't it? Nearly, because... I'm walking down the corridor and I look up and he's walking towards me and I'm like, that is Rodney Jerkins. Oh my days, oh my days. Calm down, calm down, calm down. And you're <laughs> telling yourself this. So it does happen, but they're human, man. They're yeah, human. Man. They're just successful. You know, so so, so your phone book is like crazy right now. It's, it's detailed. Wow. <laughs> it's detailed. You're like, yo, Ash, yo, Ash, it's what's happening, man? Uh, what's going it's on, detailed. bro? It's detailed. I think, I think I'm, that... I'm short of eggs, bro. I need some eggs. <laughs> you got sugar or anything? Yeah. Do you know what it is? It's you... You build relationships. I think for me, the one of the key um, elements to our success is the experience of the session. Mm. You know, you make people feel comfortable because at the end of the day, artists are humans. Yeah. You know, they have emotions. They have, sometimes I know artists, when they come into the session, they may have had like a photo shoot. They may yeah, have yeah, yeah. seven interviews before and they come to the studio to now come and work and sometimes mm. they're tired. And, yeah. Like, I aim to make them feel comfortable so they can open up and then give me a great song yeah. that we can create together. And then from there, you build great relationships. Like, yeah. I've been to many artists' houses, wow. chill. They invite me to, like, their family functions. That's and insane. I don't take that yeah, lightly. Yeah, 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 you know, you yeah. come, it's respect. And, yeah, it's just, we're friends. Man, you know? you're blessed, bro. Ah, God. It's all God, bro. I can't lie. In terms of producing, yeah. um, I know you're a big fan of Timberland. 100%. Uh, Pharrell. Yeah. Rodney Jerkins. Yeah. Um, any plans? Have you worked with any of them, or are there plans to work with those? Uh, hopefully, I've, we we've mixed a few records with Rodney Jerkins, but other than that, no. I would love to. They yeah. they they were like uh, icons. They yeah. you know they they. But you and Pharrell would be crazy. Man. I wish, man. That guy's a genius. There's people. There's there's people that do music, and you're like, okay, you're good. Yeah. And then there's people like you actually have a master yeah. of what you do. Yeah. You know, what he's done over the years. Like, I remember there was a period when, you know, he was a bit quiet and a few people were thinking, oh, is he finished? And da 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 da. The guy just said, here's happy. <laughs> <laughs> Out. <laughs> Everybody just shut up. And that comes from being in alignment with just who you are. Yeah. That comes from knowing your art. I can't be, like, you can't be him because he is him. You can be inspired by him. And I took that, I learned that, like, I can only be the best version of myself when I create. And that's why these people inspire me because they've created a sound, a frequency, a movement, a genre, a style of the same genre. And it's, you're a legend. No, one, no one's Bro, and, for that. and the thing is, uh, I mean, I think it resonates with you guys so much because you speak so much about not trying to be boxed and whatever. Yeah. And when you listen to Pharrell's production, that's literally what it is. And literally. it's the epitome of literally. not being boxed. I like, mean, when they were in, um, uh, what's it, uh, Neptunes. There was yes, a, yes, there was Neptunes. A, there, yes, was like yes. a, there was like a stat or something I read, which was like for every 10 records, Records on US radio, they produced like four. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, I, I remember. Like, they had a run like that. Like, yeah. That's all genres. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're dangerous, bro. That's too much, bro. Dangerous. I mean, if you listen to a track like Drop It Like It's Hot, that makes no sense. Bro. Timeless. Timeless. We can play it right now. Everybody's dancing. Yeah. And that's that's what I said. Like, with what we mm -hmm. were trying to do is mm -hmm. we want to make music that doesn't stick to a time because if it does, in five, six years, you're not going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah. But if you play it, it's like, that's still a great song. Yeah. That's the focus. Where we at with I'm a Piano? What's your vibe, man? What you okay. thinking? Okay, I'm a Piano, I love it. I think the feeling of it is, especially when it dropped, it was new. Yeah. It still is, you know, yeah. still. That, and Okay, let me, let me, because I know you're from South Africa. Nigerian, <laughs> so we're not going to fight today. <laughs> But like, like the authentic of my piano, I love it because my former manager, she's from Zimbabwe, so she knows like the sounds of South Africa and everything. And yeah. she put us on early. She's yeah. like, guys, this is the next thing, the tempo, everything. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I think for us, you know, Nigerians being Nigerians, we take something and, you know. <laughs> 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 Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. Like, <laughs> everybody knows what that means. But but I think I think it's yeah, it's amazing. I think mm. I think it feels good. Mm. I think music has been missing feeling. Yeah. 
we were missing a feeling of just like, I've had a long day, let me just pull it on, I go out with my friends. What are, what, are, what are the Ash and them saying like when they hear it? Like, they love it. They're, they're loving it. Yeah, they're like, and, and this is why it's beautiful now that Afrobeats and the Mapiano and all the genres from the continent are getting the spotlight because working over there, I'm realizing and seeing that they're getting tired of what's been working. Yes. You know, like female hip hop, rap boom, boom, now. Boom, 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 Okay, we've heard yes. it, you're a bad yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, thank you very much, that's cool. <laughs> you know, and I think, I think now we want something like that's fresh. And I, the reason why I say that, because I was in LA when Essence broke, yeah? And then you seen Americans like sing Essence and you don't need no one. I'm like, oh, all you guys want is feeling, yeah. come to Africa. Yes, we've got yes. That. We've got an abundance, we've bro. We've got that all over the place. So yeah. I think now like, Everybody wants to tap in. It's just making sure it makes sense because over there, it's all about songs. It's yeah. still songs. Like I know in my piano, you have seven seven minute intro <laughs> before no vocal comes in. And you're just standing there like, it's gonna drop or like, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? But we have to respect that because mm. when you're playing that kind of music in the club, nobody's thinking about the song. We're just yeah. thinking to have a good vibe. So what we've learned, you know, because we've done a few of my piano joints, um, is how do we find that medium where we have a catchy song and mm. hook on top of the feeling of a piano. And that's why I feel like what's coming next. If we can get like pop songs yeah. on a piano, that it's going to be a madness. And, and, and how do we... Because uh, there's a lot of chillers that we have who uh, produce Ama Piano, you know, because yeah. we're from SA, right? Yeah. So every second produces yeah, yeah, yeah. Ama Piano. Yeah. But how do you cross, how do you change that that boundary, man, where I'm seeing a lot of uh, songs pop on TikTok, mm -hmm. like that Trailer Bomb Now, it's mm -hmm. like yeah. the biggest Ama Piano song. The right? dance one, right? Yeah, the dance right, one, right? Uh, that song, yeah, crack. But then if the guy walks in now, you wouldn't know, it's him. I can imagine, I can, I can only imagine. Do you get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do we how do we switch that? Like. Whoa. You've been in the game for long, man. Like, it's, do, you know it, do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a yeah. mind fuck, bro. Because we're in a time where music has now become content. Like, music is, before music was like music, radio, roll. Like, now it's like, you have a song, what's the content for it? Uh, and I feel like someone like him needs to basically build his brand. Artists needs to be brands now. And brands are turning into artists. So with that kind of situation, like, I feel it's just telling the story of, okay, who are you and how did you create this song? Uh, because like you said, I don't know how he looks like. Yes, I know yes. the dance more than him. Exactly, the song. I, do you understand what I'm saying? So it's like understanding that he needs to be out there. Mm. You, you see how your song was on TikTok and people mm. did the dance? You yourself need to be out there and you can now decide how you want it to be. You could be the shy person or you could be yeah. the brand that's like, it's me that made it. It's just entirely up to you. But you just got to switch the narrative of, not relying on just the song and the dance. Hundred percent. You know, it's just give credit to the creator, give credit to the creative behind it. Let yeah. the spotlight also go on you. So, yeah, he he got hit with that one. I can tell you that for free. I, I think the downfall that I see, right? I yeah. feel like a lot of um, producers, artists from South Africa, mm. they um, they too much in their comfort zone in yeah. terms of nobody wants to leave the country. I'm telling you, like now. you did, you had to leave the UK and be in LA. And you know, look what's like, you have to invest in your own career. I'm telling you, man, you cannot stay in your comfort zone. Like even me coming here musically, like I learned so much from the creatives here, yeah. the pace, the energy, yeah. even the, they're not, they're not as like concerned in terms of like the take, in yeah. terms of like, it has to be perfect. They're feeling, yeah. it's just, bro, one take, that's it. I'm like, what do you mean? That's the take. Th that's it. And I had to learn that, like, you can't be too logical or too technical. Yeah. You need to have a feeling. So I only got that insight by traveling. Yeah. So now what I say to you outside is I'm trying to travel the continent. I want to gain, like, the feelings from different South sides, Africa, the different Senegal, sounds, yeah. Senegal, like, Ivory Coast. Like, what do you guys do there? How can you inspire me? And Beautiful. then how can I mix that with what I already do to create something that feels new, but is you already know it. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the we, only thing I'll definitely we, say. We got to gotta camp out there, man. No, I'm, listen, don't, Say it now on camera and then I don't can't, I can't when you don't put camp. I, we have to do the camp. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, no, no, I'm no. being done. No, 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 no. Consider okay. that. Say right. less, bro. Say less, bro. Say no more. Bro. Say no more. You I'll guys, give you my number yeah. now. Okay, cool. right. <laughs> but I'm saying I'm speaking about us Africans. Yeah, we're too much in our comfort zone. We have yeah. to camp out there in America like you guys yeah. do. I mean, imagine if that guy, right? He's making, I'm sure, a shitload of money from uh, mm -hmm. gigs. Yeah, yeah, Getting booked for that mm -hmm. song, right? Mm -hmm. If you were to take that money, invest it for like three months in America. 
how many people would jump on the remix? Mm. Like, yeah. Trey Songz could jump on the remix yeah. or yeah. Ty Dollar Sign or and whatever. And this also boils down to who's in your team, who's, mm. in, who's in your camp. You know, like you should have a manager that's thinking this. You should have, you know, a, a digital marketing team that's thinking yeah. about all these things. And like you said, we need to educate mm. the business side of music. Got you. you know, there's, my a and always said, there's the creative side of music and there's the business of music. Yeah. Two different things. Yeah. You know, and a lot of creatives just get sucked in. Nah, it's my song. I want to create. <laughs> yeah. Don't leave food on the table, my yeah, friend. Yeah. There's an opportunity right now where the world is looking at you. The world is yeah. listening to you. Like, time is now, bro. Time is now. Like, I can't stress. I'll be, I'll be so honest with you, yeah? yeah. My biggest thing that I keep telling my friends now is every African that's in the, you know, diaspora, that's outside yeah. of Africa, take your knowledge, take all the stuff you've learned, yes. and go back home. That's it. Just go back home and help build an infrastructure because... Yeah. We know the West is going through a lot right now. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, home is where the heart is. Yeah. You know, I've, it, there's numbers there. Yeah. So if the and numbers love. there and there's love there and the, the sun, bro, that's mm. that alone. And I live in London, bro. Rain is not a beautiful thing. <laughs> but like to go back home and invest with your art form, your craft, your knowledge is key right now. We need to keep it in-house. Oh. That's why for me, I'm fortunate enough, like out, on top of like being a record producer, I'm also an A&R consultant. Yes, at, at, at Peer at Music. Peer music. Peer so music, with yeah. that opportunity that they gave me like we've put on camps in Lagos to find a new talent yeah. and I just the reason why I'm actually in Lagos now is to basically finalize the signing of our first producer wow so bro. it's just it's just it's just things like that to be like okay let's one step at a time we've changed creating an and an essay you're gonna come do the same 100% bro man we got a shitload do, do, do you get what I'm saying yeah. and it's just to find core talent and be like okay you are a diamond in the rough let's clean you up let's educate you let's mm. give you an opportunity let's not give you too much that you can handle mm. that's another thing mm -hmm. like a lot of these artists and, and producers they have a hit song a major label will come and say oh my god it's got all the TikTok and views and everything let's give him a load of money yeah. without explaining to him like what it's going to do to what's him that? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't give somebody that hasn't really come from a lot, a lot <laughs> yeah. fast. <laughs> He's going to go crazy, gonna, gonna, We've He's seen history, do you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like we need an ecosystem where the creatives are actually looked after, you know, yeah. and they're, they're educated. And that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah. man. Fucking love that, bro. Yeah. That's amazing. Mikey, um, what, what have you dropped recently? What's coming so, up? A lot, my yeah. brother. A lot. Um, uh, we just dropped our re our second single on our project, so we're doing our first debut project as producers slash artists called yeah. Time Zones and Tylenol. Um, Tylenol basically being paracetamol in oh, America. Oh yeah, nice. yeah. So the second single features a UK R and B artist by the name of Bella okay. called Motion Sickness. The first single uh, was called Trust Yourself by singer songwriter based in LA called Sean Butler. And yeah, this EP is basically a journey within our last five years of yeah. being producers, traveling around the world, hence the name Time Zones. And we've got heavy names on the project from Tenny the Entertainer. We've got Chip from the UK. Wow. We've got Nico and Vince on the project. We've got Oxlade as well. So yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Well, why did you choose to use so many like unknown artists? Was that a preference? So or was it just like an we have energy? a mixture. We have unknown and we have known uh. because I believe like, okay, the first ever song we put out was a song called Full Speed featuring um, Verse Simmons. Not a lot of people knew who Verse yes. Simmons is. Yes. Verse Simmons is a, a Grammy nominated singer songwriter who wrote New Flame for Chris Brown and Usher, wow. for example. Wow. But the song was so addictive. Yeah. And people were like, what song is this? This is crazy. Pull it out. Independently, it did what it needed to do. So with the project, we were like, oh, we can do both. We can mm. pick up the phone to call the people we do know. Oh, yeah. And then we can travel and come across talent that no one knows and put them together. So it's like you got a song with Tenny, for example, yeah. and it's just giving you the, the attention that we feel that you deserve with the talent that you put on the record. I always find working with new artists so fulfilling because it's like the first time... You heard this person, so no one knows this person mm. in the world, right? Yeah. You hear them, yeah. it gives you that feeling. And then to see people have the same feeling yeah. once, you know, you've put them on and, mm -hmm. you know, they become successful. Yeah. I think it's so fulfilling, bro. That's, the, for me, I feel that's where my career has evolved into. The a and r in. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Because it's fun. Yeah. You know, like today I've heard two artists. <laughs> exactly. And like, you lost your mind, bro. I was like, who? They exist. <laughs> 
do you know what we could do with the music yeah. that we make? Like, and I think that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's the investment. Yeah. You know, finding this new talent, developing it, pulling it to the world and people being excited, like you yeah. said. So yeah, it's a new season. There's a lot of new talent that I'm, you know, even in Nigeria now, I want to kind of like work with and explore. And yeah. then South Africa as well, 100%. No, shout out, man. We're actually coming to LA uh, for the BT Awards. Are you gonna be around? Yeah, man. Ah, no. Say less, brother. We're staying in this mansion. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring the eggs and sugar. <laughs> I'll call Asha to bring tea. <laughs> Shout out, Mike. Where's, no, where's your business you. partner? Where's he? Where's he's Mark? actually in London. So he's. Is he in London? Yeah. He might be in Portugal. Yeah, he's in yeah. London, but he was doing so because he's into fashion. So he's doing a lot oh, of fashion okay. designing. But I came here solo dolo to yeah, get him the mission. So, yeah. All right, cool, man. Hopefully, yeah. you showed me the club tonight because I was sleeping last night and I was too tired. But listen, me, I might be falling asleep by, <laughs> by 10 o'clock. But yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there. We'll be Shut there. up, man. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mikey. One more no, time. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you very Podcasting much. Podcasting chill out of here. Boom. Fuck, bro, that was amazing. Nah, thank bro. you for having me, man. Welcome to Black Excellence. Do not fear, for if you do, just sip on some grandeur. And if you still do, ask ourselves, what would Mapapunzi do? Parama chilla, itlesha lefiki. Bungo yig, even when they ask you, how sabin, do not fear. For if you do, just say, and it's TV. This is the medicine of censorship. This is the pill. Which one is that one? Podcast and chill.